Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we'll be discussing and attempting the Brute Solo scenario. So, usual spoiler alert for level 5 Brute cards and Prosperity 3 items. Hey, this looks familiar. Well, that's because the Brute Solo scenario is basically scenario number 1, but um, set up for 2 players. In the updated version of the Solo scenario book, there is no clause lowering the monster's uh, level difficulty, so we'll play at difficulty 3 since we are on level 5. Since I'm not playing the Brute in my main campaign, I'll be creating a Brute character from scratch, as though it were at Prosperity level 5, the minimum level needed to play the solo scenario. This does mean I get to tune my perks, item build, and skill build to fit the scenario, but it also means I begin with less money and fewer perks than a typical level 5 Brute. Items are capped at Prosperity 3, the minimum required to embark on solo scenarios. Before we decide on our build, let's review the scenario book once more. The objective is to kill all enemies, thus it stands to reason that we should make a beeline for maximizing damage output, keeping the shield values of enemies in mind. Elite guards have two shield and bones have one. The Brute is a fairly combo-centric character, Finding non-loss combos that maximize damage output will be key to victory, so let's proceed with that. We'll begin with a combo we are familiar with from the Masterclass playthrough. Big movement into balance measure. Move 4 is the best non-loss movement you've got as the Brute, or move 6 if you use the bottom action on Skewer. Note that the move and attack values are bumped up by 2 with the Boots of Striding. So for the reusable move 4, Fatal Advance fits perfectly because it has a top loss action you only want to use at the end of the game, and a really powerful one at that. Outright kill, bypassing the need to draw from your modifier deck. Next on damage combos is Skewer, this time for the top action. Its damage output rivals that of Balance Measure should you connect on both hexes. In fact, you can jack it up to 5 damage pierce 1 if you set it up with Air Generation, from Leaping Cleave and Wall of Doom's bottom. Then we have Unstoppable Charge. This is probably your most reliable workhorse by virtue of the Attack 5 action coming with no strings attached. The bottom loss is a decent gap closer, being a move 4 with an AoE stun tacked on. Beyond that, our attacks fall off a bit. Skirmishing Maneuver is a flexible damage card. The bottom action is a ranged attack where you usually expect a move action. This makes it ideal for turns where you are already in melee range and are only interested in dishing out maximum damage. The top is pretty nice too, buffable to 2 instances of attack 3 with Wall of Doom. Hook and Chain is not a strong attack. Most of the time we would prefer the other level 3 card in Brute Force instead. But, having done this scenario before, we know that damage traps will be a thing and none of the monsters fly. At scenario 3, damage traps, sorry, scenario level 3, damage traps deal 5 damage, making hook and chain a strong damaging move is if executed correctly. The bottom give, gives us good mileage out of the card even in the absence of traps, like in the first room. A move 4 with an optional attack component tacked on the bottom action is always welcome. In conjunction with Leaping Cleave and Fatal Advance, it satisfies our movement needs for the entire scenario. For our final attack, meet Trample. We mentioned earlier that an attack 5 is fairly solid, which Trample matches against enemies with shield 2. Conveniently, there is one right at our doorstep, the Elite Guard. After trampling the Elite Guard, we will no longer encounter any enemies with 2 shield, so we can happily lose this during our first rest. We bring Trample as our efficient solution to the Elite Guard in the first room, and that is its only job. So that's 9 cards settled. The final card slot appears to be a flex slot. You could go with Eye for an Eye for healing, or Spare Dagger for more ranged offense, or Warding Strength for additional push and damage mitigation. What I did not realize, however, was that this slot was actually non-negotiable. I got my ass handed to me in my first two games playing with the wrong card in this slot. The one card you need to play here is Shield Bash, and this isn't immediately obvious. Both actions on it are nice, but the most crucial bit is the initiative. 
Shield Bash is actually the fastest of all brute cards, bar one which we don't have access to at level 5. And 15 happens to be the perfect number for this scenario. The guards have a pair of initiative 15 combat cards that are sin significantly neutered should you beat them in initiative. As you would know, in the, end, in the event of an initiative tie, players always go first. This allows you to attack before the guards put their shields and retaliates up, and against the poison attack, you can then resolve the bottom of shield bash as a move too, avoiding that nasty poison attack altogether. This knowledge only comes with losing to the solo scenario twice, as I did. Right, so we are done with ability cards onto items. We already have Boots of Striding locked in for balance measure. Cloak of Invisibility is an auto-include in scenarios that don't involve allies. Eagle Eye Goggles are especially important in ensuring your big, important attacks don't get nulled. With our final 20 goal, I initially went for the standard minor potions of stamina and health, However, going with offense being the best defense, instead of prolonging the game with health and card recovery, I went for the battle axe instead, which allows us to double our damage on big attacks like balance measure and unstoppable charge by dealing said damage to two enemies instead of one. Next up, let's talk about perks. As you, um, as you know, we'll have four perks because we are level five. And uh, we decided to go with the usual reliable damage cards. First, we remove the negative cards as far as we can. And then we add the plus three because that's a really nice damage boost and will really help with things such as piercing through shield. Then with our last perk, we'll just add two plus one cards. Most of the other brute perks are kind of crap, to be honest. Um, the one perk that we might consider would be the add plus one shield one self card. So instead of adding two plus ones, you only add one plus one, but it has a shield one on it. Um, it would probably be more useful if I were bringing more fa faster initiative cards, but we don't have that many, so the shield isn't going to be too relevant, I don't think. Right? Now let's move on to the battlefield and talk about uh, some combos and strategies we have in mind when approaching this scenario. So this is how the room will look like. Um, uh, this is where we'll be <laughs> air dropped into. Um, I plan to use to set up my skewer as soon as possible because it's a really powerful attack, probably the uh, most damage we can output uh, with a single top action. So to do that, we need to set up Leaping Cleave and Wall of Doom. So on our first turn, we'll play Leaping Cleave, which gives us a very flexible move 3 jump, which anticipates almost all possible actions from the bandit guards on the first turn. Whether they don't move at all or whether they move uh, the maximum, we can use the move 3 to put ourselves within melee range of the elite guard, uh, at which point we can then trample on them, uh, which is what we brought trample for. And this also sets up, uh, this will also very conveniently set us up for a nice uh, line attack, which is skewer, right? With move 3 jump, we can guarantee that we can hit enemies in a line and Wall of Doom will buff the damage. Because it's such a big attack, we will definitely use Eagle Eye Goggles to um, ensure that it doesn't get nulled. So that's going to be our opening first two moves. After that, it will really depend on what cards they draw and what situation we are in. Right, now for room opening, uh, the one that I really want to discuss is going from room number one to two. Uh, let's remove these cards from the scene first. Uh, we want to be standing as close to the door as possible, reason being that um, when we open the door, we'll be playing Skewer's bottom loss action, the move 6, with Boots of Striding to make it a move 8 into balance measure for an attack 8. So you can see here that from this tile to the archer is exactly 8 steps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we can reach the archer using a move 8. A move 6 does not cut it. Move 6 would bring us right here. We are just one tile short. So a move 8 will be necessary to get within melee range of the archer to perform balance measures attack. Um, and that will be boosted by Eagle Eye Goggles as well because we really cannot afford to let an attack 8 miss. So the reason for um, focusing on the archer before the guards in front is that um, if we were to move here and focus on the guards first, we'll be taking damage from three sources, the two melee guards and the ranged archer. If we do this, on the other hand, we'll only be taking damage from the archer, possibly at disadvantage, 
um, and not if we kill it outright. But the guards will also most likely not be able to hit us unless they draw a move 3 or higher. So um, this is probably the best uh, method of entering the room. It deals with the most potent damage source in the elite archer, uh, whilst also minimizing the amount of damage that we take uh, as the bandit guards slowly saunter towards us. Right? So uh, that's that's the general outline of uh, my... Oh, one more, one more thing about strategy I must mention. For the third room, right, uh, there's going to be bones, uh, living bones that have one shield. So the best way to deal with elite bones, with, uh, sorry, bones with shield, is to deal damage to them using traps, because traps bypass... Um, uh, yeah, bypass shield. So that can only happen if we leave the traps intact because once a single trap is gone then the bones will always try to avoid the other trap and move around the trap instead. So to get them to land on the trap on their own volition what we want to do as the brute on opening this door is to come in and then move back out all without triggering the spike trap. For this reason Leaping Cleave is a very important card even though the top action is fairly weak and uh, the air is no longer needed once we expend Skewer for its bottom loss action. We still still need Leaping Cleave because it's our only jump bottom card. Uh, when paired with Boots of Striding, it'll give us enough movement to move in, open the door, and then move back out. So that is going to be our door opening plan from room number 2 to room number 3. Hopefully the bones will start, start stepping on this trap. And it's a bonus if we can use Hook and Chain to pull the other bones into the other trap. We'll see whether that actually plays out according to plan. There's only one way to find out, and that's to join me in the playthrough in the next video. Thanks for watching for now. See you then.